let's try to revisit seven key statistical concepts for your next data science interview. We are going to understand all these concepts with a simple Python code snippet and keep it very, very easy to understand. Okay. First of all, what is a probability distribution? So if you know what is a random variable, then it will be very easy for you to understand what is probability distributions. Let me try explaining you what is a random variable. A random variable is basically a variable which takes value of outcome of an experiment. For example, suppose you are rolling a dice. What can be the outcome of this experiment? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So a random variable in this case can take the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Suppose you toss a coin. What are the values that can come out as an experiment outcome? Heads and tails. So your random variable can be heads or tails. Okay. Here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to generate a normally distributed data and I'm trying to plot a histogram of this. What the probability distribution gives you is the distribution of your random variable. Okay. How the value of your random variable is distributed. In this case, since my data is normal distribution, so the distribution of my random variable will look like this. Just like a bell curve, a normal distribution. So remember, probability distribution is a very simple concept, which is basically a distribution of your random variable. What is a random variable? I already explained you. If you want to learn more about this topic, right? You have to simply go to YouTube, search for Unfold Data Science Probability Distribution. Here, what you are going to get is, you are going to get random variable, probability mass function, cumulative function, etc. Everything you are going to get. And there is one more additional video here, if you can see, probability density function, CDF, and cumulative distribution function and Z-score as well. If you watch these two value videos, probability distribution will be absolutely clear to you. Okay. Moving on to the next concept in our list. This is known as central limit theorem. So it's again a very simple concept to understand. It tells you that distribution of a sample means approximate a normal distribution as the sample size grows. So if you take a sufficiently large sample from any data and you just plot the mean of that sample, then the means will be normally distributed. So here, what is happening is my data is an exponential data. Okay. But I am increasing my sample size here. Okay. And if my sample size is large, then you can see here I am plotting the mean. At the moment I plot mean here, you will see that the chart which is coming is of a normal distribution. Very simple to understand. Whatever is the underlying data, if I start taking the samples and my number of sampling I am doing is sufficiently large. And if, you have, if I start plotting the mean of those sample, right, what I'm going to get is a normally distributed data. Very simple. This is the one topic I have not created video on. So if you search and fold data science, this topic, you might not get the video. What you have to tell me in comment is if you want video on this topic and I will create one. Okay. Let's move to the next one. Hypothesis testing and P value, a very important concept in the world of statistics. Keep it very, very simple and just understand that hypothesis testing is essential in determining whether your results are statistically significant. So I will give you a simple example. In any data analysis journey, right? You will create some hypothesis. You will create some assumptions. For example, let's say one assumption could be income impacts the expenses. That's an assumption. Okay. This assumption need to be validated with some data. Okay. So in this scenario, Hypothesis testing is basically testing of that assumption or validating that assumption. 
when you do that you use something known as a p value and significance if your p value is sufficiently lower normally we take the range of 0.05 if your p value is below that then you can reject the null hypothesis so what is null hypothesis here let's say the null hypothesis is income does not impact the expense let's say that is your null hypothesis when you do your test and if you find that your p value is significantly lower then you can reject the null hypothesis here what i am doing is i am taking one data set like this one data set like this and doing a t test what this t test will test is it will test if these two data what is the t test result between these two since the t test result is significantly lower so we can easily reject the null hypothesis that both these data sets will perform in the similar way or both these data sets underlying characteristics will be same okay hypothesis testing pretty important concept and i will highly encourage you to go to youtube search like this unfold data science hypothesis testing and the very first video that you get here that if you watch right then your concept in hypothesis testing p value will be very very solid okay just go ahead and watch this video as you can see 124k people have watched this video and i have got very good comments on this okay here you can see hypothesis test practical implementation part 1 and part 2 these two things you can see as well moving on to the topic confidence intervals okay confidence interval basically tells you with what confidence you can say about the parameters of your population now remember population is entire data sample is a subset of the data so if there is a data for example in my case this is my data in this data with what confidence can i say what is the mean of this data so when i run a confidence interval thing here as you can see that 95 confidence interval of mean being in between 48 and 50 okay so what confidence interval tells you it simply tells you that with what confidence can you give me a range of parameters of your population here i am not talking about sample parameters of the population so with 95 percent confidence interval the mean of this population is between 48 and 50. as i told you you have to simply copy this topic go to youtube and search for this topic okay and the very first video you will get is simplifying confidence intervals you go and learn this you will never forget what is confidence interval okay let's move on to a b testing there is something called as an a b testing very important in the world of statistics and uh, when you are building something like recommended system when you are building something like marketing campaign what you want to do at times is you want to test how your campaign is performing you want to test how your marketing strategy is performing so what you do you do it on two similar kind of groups and on one group you do one kind of campaign and other group you keep it as a control group and you just compare how your marketing is behaving how your campaign is behaving so here what i'm trying to do is i have created two groups just for the demonstration purpose this is my first group this is my second group and the null hypothesis here is both these groups perform similar so if i'm getting a significantly lower uh, number in p value then i can reject my null hypothesis so what 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 a b testing will tell you is a b testing will simply tell you if these two groups are behaving different or these two groups are behaving same okay so we use it for testing various scenarios that i told you now again you have to go here give a filter called a b testing let's make a b test simple one year ago 9k views you can watch this video many people have said it's a very nice video to understand a b test okay the sixth concept that i want to cover here is known as covariance and correlation many times in your data there will be two features or two columns or two values that tend to change together 
for example let's say there is a data of kids growth right so height of the kid and weight of the kid both will grow together okay so different kinds of scenarios can be there where we need to understand how two features or two columns are changing together there are two concepts which will come into picture one is called covariance another is called correlation covariance simply tells you what is the magnitude of change between those two variables and correlation will more or less tell you same thing but on a scale of minus 1 to plus 1 so covariance can be any number correlation can be between minus 1 to plus 1 in this case i have taken this data this data covariance is this and correlation is this and as you can see covariance and correlation is getting printed below okay so again this topic as well you have to just copy you have to go here and search covariance versus correlation just follow the pattern of searching how i am searching unfold data science plus topic name okay covariance versus correlation with sample data it's a video watched by 100k people and again i have received some very nice comments on this video so please go ahead and watch covariance versus correlation video fine the last concept that i want to use here is numpy is not imported hence it is giving error but no problem we can import and rerun this the last concept is called chi square test for independence this is one of the test that we we use for categorical features we want to understand how two categorical features change or behave with each other in those kind of scenarios what we do is we do a specific kind of test known as chi square test and in this test again we get the p value and we either reject the null hypothesis or we fail to reject the null hypothesis based on the p value now again if i want to understand this topic more i will simply go here and say chi square okay and you will see that anova t test chi square went to use what video will come 200k people have watched this video it's again a video with very nice comments go ahead watch this video and you will understand about that topic as well whatever topics i mentioned here guys it is important from two perspective first interview perspective they will ask you questions on this and second from knowledge point of view all these topics are very practical in nature these topics you will use on the job okay please go ahead revise the concept try to change some numbers and see how things are changing and then you know make your concept stronger please give me a thumbs up if you like this video guys it takes a lot of effort to create this kind of content it may look very simple because a lot of thought and time has gone into it okay and i'll see you all in next video wherever you are stay safe and take care